Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, plus Yurt Life, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, September 27th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2023. Campi Falegri Volcano Seismic Crisis resulted in an M4.2 quake yesterday. Uplift has reached 15 millimeters in just the past month. Keep calm. It's boom time. Flooding in El Paso. Downtown shops close up early. Heavy rain flooded downtown El Paso on Tuesday, September 26th. The storm brought hail, rain, lightning. People could even be seen walking through the water above. And in fact, it looks like... With videos sent in by you, our viewers, rain and hail moving into the borderland, causing flooded roadways. And even here in our studio in West El Paso, you can yeah, see they got hammered down there. Apparently, it looks like a pretty good soaking in El Paso. Shops along El Paso Street closed up shop yesterday as water was going over the sidewalks and into their stores. Let's take a look. Look at the scene here. Wow, that is a quite a rapid deluge. And a sign of the times, as we know, Honga Tonga has increased the moisture in the atmosphere by 14%. We've seen record flooding over the, well, since the eruption, more to come. Let it snow. Winter predictions start as El Nino strengthens. Here's what forecasters are saying. Well, the seasonal temperature outlook will be above normal for the Northeast uh, and the Northwest as well as Alaska, and the precipitation outlooks looks above normal for nor'easters, as well as snow in the southern region. So stay tuned for more El Nino updates. Tranquil, we tranquil weather pattern. Overall, it's a tranquil weather pattern across the lower 48, but there are a few weather hazards to point out today. Some severe storms with hail, heavy rain, and wind gusts are possible in the Ohio and Tennessee Valleys. Heavy rain in Florida today and the next several days may produce flooding, and a strong front arriving in the northwest may produce locally heavy rain and cooler temps, as well as high elevation snow. And there is snow returning to the map. Heavy snow in western Canada there. Looks like BC and Alberta are going to be picking up snow for the next several days. And as we enter October, boom, snow's going to move into the map into the Sierras, Move its way down into Wyoming, Montana, and to Colorado, and maybe even Minnesota. Say it ain't soda, but it is. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He started mumbling. Now, as far as the tropical forecast, tropical storm Felipe, or Felipe, I don't know how they're saying it, is going to be headed directly towards Puerto Rico as a tropical depression, which is good news. The spaghetti models, however, are going a little haywire with some of them shooting the storm straight north. One of the models taking it straight towards the southern, southeastern U.S., and many others having it, well, do crazy things here at the Leeward Islands. So we'll keep a close eye on Philippe as the prediction is quite squirrely. Eight electrocuted as torrential rain floods Cape Town. Yes, in southern Africa. This is according to France 24 English. Let's take a look at the report. And 6,000 uprooted trees that have crushed everything beneath them. Uprooted trees that have crushed everything beneath them. Vehicles completely buried in mud. The damage is just some of that caused by torrential rains that devastated parts of South Africa's Western Cape over the weekend. We're out of power, out of electricity, and it's gonna be um, load shedding again now at 12. So my personal take on this, it's like, yo, I just can't explain, man, how I feel personally because I'm standing here in my friend's house and seeing this. It's not a good picture for people to live in this. Uh, the damage is out. Uh, the carpets and, uh, and the the hold ups of us. Everything is uh, it's damaged. Even the fridge. Those living in surely built homes in poorer areas were particularly at risk. And illegal connections to the power grid caused the fatal electrocution of eight people, including four children. Several people are also still missing. Roads and bridges have been damaged in some areas and are still inaccessible. About 1,500 structures and 6,000 people have been affected by the flooding. 
Holy macaroni, more flooding and more to come. As we predicted over eight years ago, we would be reporting on this type of weather where we see severe weather, increased hail, increased flooding, increased weather fluctuations, and well, crop loss and failure, famine, migration. It's all happening now as we report on it. Verkhoyansk, Russia, records the earliest minus 10 C in decades. Another polar blast to bring low-level snow to New Zealand, and snow is returning to Kashmir as the global warming scam continues. Seismic update, no quakes of note. We do have another rumbler here on the Alaska Peninsula. Multiple five magnitudes happening in this region over the last few weeks. We're keeping a close eye on maybe an uptick and maybe some volcanic activity. Overall, the ring of fire is quite quiet. The U.S. is quiet. All of Asia, take a look. Not much going on. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have Dukono to 7,000. Ibu to 7,000. Sabankaya to 27,000. Popo to 21. Semaru to 14,000. We've got Nevado de Ruiz, a discrete volcanic ash emission in 19,000 feet. Katmai Volcano. No eruption, but re-suspension from 1912 eruption to 6,000 feet. I have no idea what that means. And that brings us to Campi Falegre Volcano. A seismic crisis is happening once again at the volcano. This is increased uptick over the last several months, and it's getting larger and stronger. You do the math. A swarm of earthquakes occurred beneath the Campi Falegri caldera yesterday, starting early morning at 5.06 local time. 64 quakes have been recorded with a maximum, maximum magnitude of 4.2, according to INGV. The epicenter of the largest event was located between Pazuli and Bagnola, right on the coast, which is where the people are the most, right here in Bagnoli. And which is bad news. Moroto Di Vito, the director of ING Vesuvian Observatory, declares the dynamics of Campi Falegri is being constantly monitored by monitoring stations. Geophysical and geochemical parameters indicate ongoing inflation. The ground has been bulged by 15 meters per month in the Rhone Terra, the area of maximum uplift. Even the analysis of planimetric deformation data of the ground does not show significant variations compared to the characteristic radial shape of the central area of Pizzuli. At present, there is no elements that suggest significant evolutions of the system in the short term without prejudice to the fact that any future variation in the monitor parameters may lead to differential evolution of the hazard scenarios. In other words, they're covering their... Because they don't, they're claiming nothing's going to happen. Don't panic. But really, people, take a look at this. This, this is, should be panic. Period. <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a whole lot of earthquakes, hundreds of them over the last week, each day increasing every few days. Boom, another seismic swarm. And it is continuing today. So we're certainly going to keep a co- close eye on Campi Falegri as the powers that be are saying, nothing to see here, folks. Go on with your daily work. Space weather news update. The sun is dead at solar max. And solar cycle 25 is a fizzle. Now, will solar cycle be a complete zero? Many people are predicting that. Predictions of solar activity of cycles 25 and 26. Nonlinear autoregressive exogenous neural networks have shown, well, some amazing things. And the conclusion is that the trend of solar activity is to is expected to decline further during the next two cycles as we expect that the sun is starting a maunder like minimum or a new dalton minimum which can cause some significant space weather effects and climatic effects on the ground including crop failures famines migrations and food riots now Before all that happens, please get out in the next few weeks and enjoy the annual solar eclipse. It's coming to parts of the U.S. on October 14th. How long does it take to drive to the path of the annual solar eclipse? Well, totality is in the gray stripe, which moves right through downtown Albuquerque. Santa Fe is on the outskirts. Archuleta County, where we are, is also in totality. The Four Corners marks an X on totality. I'm sure a lot of people will be gathering there. But anywhere on this stripe, you will see totality somewhere between like 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. 
during the event. So please plan accordingly. This is coming up on the morning of October 14th. Now, if you haven't heard, we have a new channel. It's called Yurt Life, and we're just getting going. Some amazing content we're going to be dumping here as winter fast approaches to prepare the yurt for the experiment of a lifetime. Scientists spot black dust and debris on the canister containing the asteroid samples from Bennu. Now recovery specialists opened the lid of NASA's OSIRIS-REx sample canister and discovered some extra bits of the asteroid on the avionics de deck. What this means is anyone's guess, but they may be setting us up for a cosmic, wait for it, virus outbreak. Yes, I said it. I think that this is all a ruse and a ploy, well, to send the next deadly virus a mock amongst the masses and claim it was a mistake from the Osiris Rex mission. What are your thoughts? Leave them below. That's certainly a boom to knowledge and speculation, albeit. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that, that is a boom. Mm-hmm.